A lot of the improvements we've made in air quality over the last 20, 30 years, although they haven't gone far enough, we've only been able to do because we actually measure air quality and we know what's in the atmosphere. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't know that we're making the air cleaner. We wouldn't also know where the hot spots are where we need to do more. It's exactly the same with nitrogen. We need to find the hot spots. And until we measure it, we can't find the hot spots. Two nitrogen atoms sitting together, that's nearly 80% of the air we breathe. And that's great because it's really stable. It doesn't do anything at all. But once that nitrogen from the air starts reacting with hydrogen or oxygen, you form a whole range of other compounds like ammonia, like nitrates. A lot of the nitrogen that we are putting on the fields is actually ending up in our air and in our water and causing air pollution that is harmful to human health, also causing climate change and damaging wildlife. The idea of the nitrogen budget is really simple. If you want to make a difference, you have to know what the problem is. So we want to know how much nitrogen fertilizer is coming to the system, how much is nitrogen is formed from combustion sources. That all goes into Scotland and then where's it going? Once we know that, we can use that information to target the key areas where we're losing most of the nitrogen. And at the moment we know in very crude terms that we've got about 87 kilograms per hectare excess nitrogen in Scotland on our agricultural land. We're losing 13 billion euro per year worth of nitrogen pollution across Europe. That's 25% of Europe's common agricultural policy budget. So it's not about saying this is how much nitrogen we can use, it's about creating a baseline of how much nitrogen goes into what parts of our system. The goal is to add up all these terms and this helps us look for priorities, look for the low hanging fruit and the win-wins so that we can optimise for a more efficient system in Scotland. Agriculture always involves climate emissions, but we can cut them down significantly. And in cutting them down significantly, we'll have a healthier countryside and we'll have more prosperous farmers. So there's actions for agriculture to take and there's actions that we can take ourselves. We first of all need to get our pH of our soil right because if the pH isn't right then the plants can't use nitrogen effectively. If we cut our meat consumption by half we can reduce our climate change related pollution of nitrogen by 25 to 40 percent. We need to manage our slurry and our manures much more carefully. We need to store them much more carefully. We need to spread them much more intelligently. There are things that have been done in other countries where, for example, they said, when you spread your manure, you've got to put it in the soil and not on the soil. Manure or food waste are currently seen as output of our system that we don't know what to do with and we're happy to just dump them somewhere. Whereas you can create a system where that, those resources that contain valuable nutrients are processed and sold on and reused. So tackling nitrogen pollution is a key opportunity to promote the circular economy thinking and create innovation and jobs and reuse resources. How much less air pollution, water pollution, less climate impact do we want? That's a democratic question to ask. What we need is first and foremost for the government to show us the sense of direction and give us the ambition. So there's opportunities there for governments to stimulate action. And we will need farmers to be able to learn from each other because a lot of farmers are already doing a lot of good things and we need to have the schemes in place for them to be able to talk with each other and share that information and good practice. That will benefit everybody, not just the environment but also farmers.